You have to hand it to the Korean manufacturers, Kia and parent company Hyundai, for being able to produce a full line of products from subcompact cars to luxury cars, vans to SUVs, in a fraction of the time that it took many of the Japanese competition to produce a full line of their products. Here's another example of Kia trying to fill the needs of average Canadians. It's the brand new Kia Borrego. It's a mid to full size SUV with seating up to seven people. It has 4x4 capability and is powered by either a V6 or V8 engine. To me, the Borrego is a direct competitor for the Nissan Pathfinder. It looks similar, it's a similar size. The Pathfinder has three rows of seats and two engine choices. The Pathfinder and Borrego have the same starting price at just over $36,000. I even think the Borrego kind of looks like the Pathfinder. The conservative styling won't attract a crowd, but it won't offend either. The chrome grille is simple, but the headlights are aggressive enough. V6 and V8 models can be equipped with 17 or 18 inch wheels depending on the trim level. I think the nicest styling touches the wraparound rear lights that remind me of the Volkswagen Touareg. Lift gate goes up manually. There's no power lift gate available in the Borrega, which is a bit of a no-no in this era. The back seats, the third rows are up, so you get some storage space behind there. You have a little more underneath. To put the seats down, you pull the lever, down it goes, pull the lever, down it goes, no problem, right? Lots of cargo capacity, a big vehicle as you would expect. Now getting the seats up, there's no strap to grab onto, so you have to reach all the way in and pull this up. Not a problem for me, but if you're five feet tall and you don't weigh very much, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. The back seat suffers from the same problem we complained about with the, you guessed it, Pathfinder. The legroom is disappointing for a truck of this size. This is done to accommodate the third row of seats, which are adequate for short trips, but getting in and out is a bit of work. The second row does recline, but if you have to fold the third row, it's essential that the second row seats be in their upright position. Now for such a big vehicle, you think you'd have to really get a ladder to climb into it, but the step in height is really that easy. When you come inside, you're welcomed by a simple yet well-executed dash. The materials, the fit and finish are exactly what you would expect in this class of vehicle. But what it has is an uncanny resemblance to the Nissan Titan pickup truck, in my opinion anyway. And the Pathfinder, by the way, is based on the Titan platform. The shift gate is almost the same. The placement of the radios in heat look very, very similar. It's actually well done. The Borrego gets standard heated seats and available leather seats. The steering wheel tilts on the base model, but it does not telescope. The higher trim levels get power telescopic steering. Steering wheel mounted radio controls are not standard on the base model. There's no navigation system offered and Bluetooth connectivity is also not offered. Satellite radio is included on all models and there is an input for auxiliary media players. Well, just like the Pathfinder, this Borrego is a truck-based SUV, and that means it has a real chassis, and then they bolt the body on top of it, unlike a crossover where the chassis and the body is all one. It's called unibody construction. This allows potential owners to do some real off-road driving and tow more than a crossover. The Borrego can tow up to 5,000 pounds with the V6 and 7,500 pounds when equipped with the V8. The Pathfinder, in comparison, can tow 6,000 pounds with the V6 and 7,000 with the V8. All right, with all this talk of V8s and V6s, let's get down to details. The V6 that's offered in the Borrego is a 3.8 liter unit, and it produces 176 horsepower and 267 pound-feet of torque. The V8 is the same V8 developed for the Hyundai Genesis luxury sedan with a healthy 337 horsepower and 323 pound-feet of torque. The sound from under the hood is reassuring and never intrudes too much into the cabin. The V6 gets a 5-speed automatic and the V8 a 6-speed. As you mentioned, this is a truck-based SUV with a real chassis running underneath here. And typically with this design, you don't get the best handling and road manners. They have done an excellent job with this Borrego. The road feel is good. It feels almost luxurious. It's got rack and pinion steering. It's got coil suspension. It doesn't have those leaf springs. And it really handles quite admirably for a big truck. They've done a very nice job. Also, they've done a great job of insulating the passenger and the driver from wind, road, and engine noise. The 4x4 system is part-time, which means it can be manually switched on the base model. The higher trim levels get an automatic on-demand system, which can also be locked for better traction over rough terrain. 
All Borregos are equipped with anti-lock brakes, electronic stability control, traction control, hill assist, downhill braking control, tire pressure monitoring system, and six airbags with optional knee airbags. You know, I'm driving this Borrego and I have to keep reminding myself, this is their very first effort in this class of vehicle. They've never done one of these before. And for a very first effort, the Borrego really is good. And you know, you've seen the history of Kia and Hyundai. They take a product and they refine it and they make it better and they add in some of the features that are missing in this vehicle, like navigation and Bluetooth and a power lift gate. Trust me, they will come in the next uh, iteration of this vehicle. It's only a matter of time. All you have to do is look at that Hyundai Genesis luxury car. They will get there. It's just a matter of time. And for a first effort, this is is good. I think this Borrego is going to find a hard time getting traction here in Canada. Canadians are turning away from mid to full size truck based SUVs and they're going towards compact crossovers and compact cars. So is this vehicle better than the established Nissan Pathfinder? I don't think so. It's only an advantage if you get the V8 option. A V8 mid to full size truck based SUV, now that really is a shrinking market. For complete specs, go to our website at drivingtelevision.com.